how can we get these coaches, you know, looks at these kids? And so I, you know, came up with the idea to live stream this football combine. So we did one back in May. They would do the 40 yard dash, they would do the vertical and then run through football drills. And uh, it went over really well. Hello, and welcome to the Dactronics Experience Podcast. I'm Justin Oxner here with Matt Anderson. Today, we're joined by Chad Hunt, Digital and Video Manager at the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He's going to tell us about the venue, the events they host, and much more. We're here today with Chad. How are you doing, Chad? Doing good, guys. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Matt's sitting across from me over there, six feet apart. How are you doing, Matt? <laughs> I'm doing good over here, Justin. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Chad, can you start by uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and, and then your role at the Pentagon? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my name's Chad Hunt, and I'm the digital video manager here at the Sanford Pentagon. Um, I've been in this role for, uh, this is season number five coming up. And my role at the Pentagon, um, it kind of it kind of varies depending on if it's a game day or not. But on on non game days, uh, you can find me building game scripts, uh, producing videos, editing videos, graphic design work um, for a variety of things. Mainly for our in house video board production uh, for a variety of events, uh, but also some social media graphics, social media videos uh, to help promote those events and and maybe some recaps and stuff like that. Um, before before my job here at the Pentagon, it all started uh, as an intern for the Tacoma Rainiers, oh, okay. and they're a uh, they're a AAA team out out in Tacoma, Washington, uh, AAA affiliate of the Seattle Mariners. Right, right. And um, so that was a handful of years ago now, um, but that's kind of where I got my hands on experience with the um, video board and game entertainment business, and I just you know I just fell in love. I, I started as kind of the more uh, what do you call it? like a mascot wrangler and <laughs> kind of, kind of more of the game entertainment side of things. And then I, I caught eyes of the video board in the control room and I asked my boss, Hey, can I, can I transition a little bit and get, um, you know, get my, get my feet wet with the video board production. And she said, yeah, yeah, we can get you in there. And, uh, and then it was, yeah, two, three months of that and moved back here to Sioux Falls and got a job with the Sioux Falls sky force, uh, the G league team here worked there for a couple of years. And then, uh, transitioned to Midco Sports Network and got into kind of the live TV world as a producer and videographer, and uh, love that. And then this um, this job at the Pentagon, I, I've actually been here uh, since it opened in 2013, but I started as a part time employee, just a game day game day producer. And then they kept uh, booking events, getting busier and busier, and it turned into a full time job. Um, yeah, four or five years ago. Wow. So you've had, you've had a lot of different experiences when it comes to, I mean, anything that seems like related to a sporting event that goes on. Is right. that, is that something then that you just, you know, you always had an interest in or what drew you to that kind of line of work? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, a sports nut. Um, I actually, uh, baseball would be my favorite sport. Um, although working in sports, I, I don't know if I don't want to work in, in baseball for a, for a career just because it was, uh, it was an eye opening experience with how, many games they actually play in the summer especially (laughs) at the triple a or the major league level so if you're if you're at the ballpark i mean eight game homestands then you get a four day you know quote unquote rest but you're still prepping for the next homestand so after i transitioned kind of into the basketball or the the indoor sports um it was a little bit more uh time friendly and you know family friendly from that aspect but uh but it's just really cool to see kind of the that's what caught my interest initially was just to see what goes on behind the scenes and how everything you know, kind of works. Nice. Nice. And then you, you came back to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where you're working at the Sanford Pentagon. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the variety of events you host there? Uh, yeah, that's, that's why I love my job is it's, it's different every day. Um, we hope we host definitely a wide variety of events. Obviously basketball would be our, our, pri- our, you know, our primary one, um, handful of volleyball matches, uh, wrestling, MMA fights, concerts, um, we've hosted a wedding here on heritage court before we've also hosted a funeral. <laughs> um, oh, wow. so there's been, uh, you know, banquets. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some in there, but, but yeah, there's definitely a wide variety. It keeps them on my toes. Yeah, and there's, I've, I've been down to the Pentagon. I'd say quite a few times we're up here in Brookings and there was, um, mm-hmm. it was a couple of years ago. Cause you guys were hosting the, it was both the NSIC, uh, basketball tournaments. 
And then also, I believe it was like the the national championship rounds. And my alma mater is Northern State. Yep. Shameless okay. plug again. There we go. Yep. Try to find a way to bring that up during an episode. But um, <laughs> they had played down there during the, the conference tournament. I remember going to all the games down there, too. And then they went away for regionals and then ended up coming back because they made it through regionals. And it was... I mean, like I said, I've been to that place before, but it was really packed for those basketball games, and that was that was such a fun facility and atmosphere to be in. Yeah, I mean, uh, Northern State, they do a great job. They travel really well. Uh, you know, they their joke is kind of their, we're their second home court. And, I mean, <laughs> the last couple of years, that's been true because, you know, they travel really well for the NSIC tournament. And then a few years back when they made a run, and that championship game was – was something else it was yeah. just packed from wall to wall and you know they unfortunately came up short but the atmosphere and that was just unbelievable wow yeah and you go from your main main thing is basketball you said but you even mentioned mma fighting like i didn't even think of that as <laughs> yeah. one of the bigger events that you might even bring there so do you have to change your show quite a bit from one event to the next or is it really depending on who's coming in and what event it is yeah, good question. It does kind of depend on on who's coming in um, and how much how much of an in-house show they have and how much they have, you know, their hands on it. A lot of for example for the MMA fights, they'll come in with the TV truck, um, and then it's primary for the TV uh, audience. But then they'll they'll give me a feed from their truck to you know to display on the in-house boards. But they control kind of what goes on there, um, and so I'll still be there and kind of help you know, plug stuff in, but essentially they're running that show. So, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for, as far as our events go, it just, you know, we just transition from basketball games to volleyball to, um, you know, concerts and a lot of that just depends on what it is and how much, um, we want to get involved with the in-house production. Yeah. Cause when it's a, when it's a tournament like that too, or even like a basketball tournament, when you have all these teams coming in, does the conference usually give you just, you know, here's all the logos for everything and you got to make content at all for the displays or do sometimes they come with their own content pre-made? Yeah. And again, that, and that, that kind of changes too. Like for the, the NCAA, they're pretty picky about, um, you know, their brand and standard, which rightfully so. So mm-hmm. they, they send a hard drive full of content and then we're basically, we're, you know, we're, uh, required to, to play that content, but, uh, the NSIC, um, they're great partners of ours and, you know, they've been flexible with, uh, what we can show us. So yeah, they, they send sponsors, uh, sponsor logos. And then from a game entertainment standpoint or intro video standpoint, they kind of gave me the flexibility to kind of just run with that, uh, the last few years. And, you know, it's just, it's just awesome. It's kind of my goal to give those kids the, you know, championship experience when they show up here in Sioux Falls. And I think we've done a good job with that the last couple of years. And you mentioned they they sometimes bring in their own content and stuff, and I'm sure they have it size and whatever, but um, mm-hmm. that made me think like concerts and stuff, they, they sometimes bring their own displays and, and equipment. Have Do you have people bring their own equipment in very often too? Is that something you have to coordinate and make sure all that's hooked up to? Yeah, uh, especially for concerts. That's the most popular. Um, again, another one that comes to mind would be like a cheer and dance competition where they, they come in, it's a, it's a full facility rental and they bring in, um, projector screens and whatnot so they Mm. again they kind of run their show but uh going back to the concerts yeah those those are some of my favorites especially if we're able to use um our crew and our staff but a lot of times they'll they'll come in they'll set the stage and then they'll uh they'll hang you know just projector screens um on the sides of the stage and then we're able to plug in from our equipment and we can show the live video during the during the concert and Usually I'll be the TD and then we'll have, you know, four or five camera operators that are right there next to the stage. And, and, uh, it's, it's nice to be doing something different. And you, and you mentioned they come in and they help, you know, use your, your staff and your crew. Could you maybe, and I'm, I have a hard time thinking of how to say this cause it's not typical cause anything we've learned so far is that you don't have a typical event or typical day, but <laughs> right. if it's, if it's a volleyball or basketball game, what is your, your control room setup like with, with your staff and your equipment? How do you have all that laid out? Yeah, for the general um, basketball volleyball setup, we'll have we'll have a producer, which is usually myself, um, and their role is to just uh, you know follow the game script, make sure everybody's on the same page with sponsor elements and timeouts and you know videos to get played. They're sitting next to the director slash TD or technical director. They're sitting at the video switcher and they're talking on headset with the camera operators, and so they're just basically telling them what to shoot so they're they're the one <clears throat> excuse me they're the ones saying standby one take one ready to take two and then next to them we have our replay uh pretty self-explanatory they're looking for good plays dunks or three-pointers and they can 
rewind and queue those up basically, you know, at an instant or they can build packages. Something I, I put a lot of pressure on our three play on our free play or replay operators uh, the last couple of years with building building pregame packages. So we'll incorporate like uh, into the intro video, we'll we'll uh, incorporate kind of a pre-produced maybe 30 seconds. So the first half of it would be pre-produced for everybody. And then the second half of the intro video would be shots of the teams warming up that, you know, just took place 10, 15 minutes prior. So, so that three play operator is looking for cool dramatic footage and then we'll slow it down to 50%. And then basically we'll piece the, the first half of the intro video, piece that together with the, the clips that he found and turns out to be pretty cool. Synced up to music and everything too. So um, sorry, I went off kind of a rant there, but then uh, <laughs> next, next to that we have the show control and their job is, um, Again, organize organize a show control computer with uh, kind of the game script and then executing the full page sponsor graphics um, and also kind of our stats look and headshots, um, in-game in -game animations, things like that. Um, and then typically we'll have three manned cameras and two or three unmanned cameras, whether that's a, a PTZ that we have mounted above the center hung or um, some GoPros on the backboards. No, it's funny. You, you mentioned going on a rant, rant about the replay operators. That's something that yeah. I've always found fascinating because it was when I first started Dactronics and I would go in shadow control rooms during events. Yeah. You don't realize how many how many things the instant replay operator goes through. There's some times where they say, you know, if there's like a bad injury, so you have to look at it and the producer has to be back to <laughs> and be like, all right, don't, nope, don't put that up on the screen. We don't want to show <laughs> no, that. Right. Or something bad going on. So there's like some censoring involved yeah. in there that I never thought of you before. You don't want to make people queasy with yeah. the replay there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They always, you know, if there's a bad call or something and uh, it, that's always kind of a trick one too, is do we show it? Do we show it in house as the refs are looking at it? I know there's there's some rules on that, but yep. yeah. that's, that's always a questionable one too, is whether we should show a bad call or not. Yep. But in in our standpoint, you know, we're a neutral site for a lot of these games, so it's not really, um, you know, we're not playing favorites to anybody. So mm -hmm. right, right, and it's called uh, Heritage Court there, and it's got some sort of ambiance that goes with it. I'm sure I'm, I've heard there's like a retro scoreboard. Can you talk about the the facility and the atmosphere there? Yeah, so when they when they built Heritage Court Arena, um, again back in 2013 is when it opened. But their vision was to make it look uh, look old school, similar to to what you see in the movie The Hoosiers. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a dark wood parquet floor. <clears throat> the uh, the paint scheme is kind of the browns and the neutrals. Uh, but the yeah the old school center hung scoreboard. We also have two auxiliary scoreboards that they have a. Uh, a clock. I mean, it's like a circle secondhand clock and it's synced up with the time. So if you have, you know, let's just say five minutes and 30 seconds on the game clock, that, that seconds hand will be, you know, down on the 30. And then as it counts down, it'll actually rotate around cool. in a circle, just like you would look at your, you know, at a watch or a clock. And it's, I don't know how, uh, how the engineers at Dectronics designed that and, <laughs> and made it work, but I know, <laughs> I know there are some headaches in the planning stages, but it's it's awesome. We get a lot of compliments on that, and I don't know if there's anywhere else, you know, in the country that has something like it. I was gonna say, well, I remember seeing pictures of it when it was getting installed before yeah. I actually went down there for an event, and that was the first time I had. I mean, I'd seen that aside from maybe, like you said, a movie like Hoosiers, but it right. was. Yeah. And then going down there and seeing it, and when I was down there with uh, you know, like other college buddies watching the basketball games, it was one of those. I've never seen this before, and then it slowly turns into the. Oh, that's really cool. I kind of yeah. like that now. It's like a classic yeah. look in a, a modern sports era there. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's another thing they're going for was to, to, to keep the old school feel, but also have the, you know, the high class amenities with the video displays and stats and all that kind of stuff, too. So I think it's the, you know, the best of both worlds. Yeah. And then um, kind of, you know, you, you've kind of gone through the control room here and the different products and displays that are in inside the bowl or on the court. Um, and then we also heard though that you came up to one of the video summits that we held in Brookings earlier this year. Is that right? Yeah, that was that was uh, awesome to be a part of. I attended the uh, the baseball user group back in January, I think it was. And uh, you know, obviously, we can't host any baseball games. That was my next Pentagon. question. Yep. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> wiffle ball. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but being you know, since I since I came from the Tacoma Rainiers initially, I just kind of wanted to see what everybody's working on and kind of what the new trends are nowadays, but especially with, with the Sanford sports complex here, um, even just in my four years, just how fast it's grown, you know, there's, there's some potential that we could someday have a baseball stadium and, you know, uh, that would be awesome if we do. So I just wanted to kind of get a, 
head start on things and just see what's out there. But even even from the basketball standpoint, I was able to you know come out of that two or three day conference with new ideas and you know it's just always good to talk to some of your your colleagues that even though they're in a different sport you know you're all still doing the same thing so it was just good to pick their brains on hey how do you do this or if you have a webcast and you haven't you know we just had some good conversation it was good to be a part of yeah and, and idea sharing that happens at those conferences is that yeah. was this your first one that you came to for for Dactronics? yeah this is my first Dactronics um user group i've been to the the idea conference uh two years Oh, okay. uh, it's it, it's been a few years ago now, but um, yeah, that was, again, it's just good to to get with your colleagues and kind of see what everybody else is working on, getting getting ideas. Yeah, is that something you guys do often? We've heard that different different teams or different sports say, okay, this is happening on the other side of the country, and it's not really a, <clears throat> it's not really a competition for me. I'm just trying to implement something cool and interesting. Are you finding different ideas that other people have done, or do you see that when you go to other sports events or watch on TV and say that's kind of cool? Let's see how we can do that here. Yeah, for sure. I, I I don't get out to live sporting events as much as I, I would like to, but that's my, you know, you do your homework, you go to a, a Twins game or, um, you know, a Timberwolves game or whatever around here. And it's just, you know, you sit there as a fan, but, you know, in this world, it's hard, or in my job, I guess I should say, it's hard to go to a game and enjoy myself without <laughs> sit, staring yep. at the video displays and say, hey, how'd they do that? Or, hey, that's a great idea. <laughs> so... And when I was working with Midco, it was kind of the same thing. I'd watch a game on ESPN and, you know, I'd, oh, there's a camera over there. Why don't you take that camera? You know, stuff like that. So <laughs> it's hard to enjoy yourself when you go to a live game. But it's, uh, yeah, definitely, no matter kind of where you go. Um, I went to a game in San Diego a few years back and, you know, came back with some ideas. And it's just, it's it's good, though. You got to keep things fresh. And especially this day and age, you just got to keep it, you know, keep things rolling. So. I was going to laugh. We always called it the Dactronics curse, you know, and that's why I've always known it as, is whenever I go to a facility with friends, it's always, oh, what millimeter pitch is that? Yeah. Or, you know, like, oh, what the viewing angles like on this? And they would always tell me to just shut up and watch the game. Yeah. And then I think it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't think of it that way, but until we started doing this podcast and we've interviewed a lot of people in the sports industry, production, athletic mm-hmm. directors, where it's, it's not the Dactronics curse. It's just that's an industry thing because they always say the same thing. They can't just go to a game and watch it like a normal fan does. They're always critiquing, writing ideas down. It's yep. just a different lens, I guess, to watch it through. Yeah, for sure. But, it, you know, it's cool because everybody's on the same page. And if if somebody that came to the Pentagon is able to get a good idea, then, you know, I guess I, guess I did my job right. So <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's like Justin said, it's idea hacking, right? So it's like yeah. you, you share it. You're not, you're not going to be fighting for the same people in the same place whenever these these groups get together and aside from like the baseball user group aside from it just being you know here here's new uh rules that were updated or here's how to do yeah. the stats and data layouts there's a lot of things that can apply to to the sports no matter which one yeah for sure it was it was really cool to to hear uh especially with from the, the minor league groups just how much how similar we are because obviously we're a smaller venue and a lot of those guys are too. So we had a lot of the same problems and issues and we're able to, you know, talk things over and it was just good to be a part of. And the major league baseball players are players, the major league baseball people that are there for the sport, <laughs> not the players. Uh, they always make that comment too, about the minor league systems about, they love to see the crazy different promotions and oh, ideas yeah. they, they do. Cause they can't always take it exactly into a, a major league stadium, but they just love seeing what they're doing in the minor league systems. Cause there's so much more freedom, I guess I'd say. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I gotta know out of all the events that you've hosted and all the different experiences you've had, do you have some, some favorites that might stick out in your mind? Like, Oh, this was a really cool event that we did, or this was really cool to be a part of like last second shots or anything crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a handful the the ones that stick out to me that, that I like the best are actually the concerts. And Luke Combs came here two years ago. It's kind of right before he blew up, um, you know, country country artist. Yeah. And we booked him probably a year in advance. And then all of a sudden he started getting all these awards and whatnot. And we're like, man, Luke Combs is coming to play a show here. And <laughs> and it was it was sold out and and he didn't travel with his entire production crew. So they is one of those scenarios is where they um they flew some projector screens. We plugged in our, our switcher and I was able to TD a show for Luke Combs and our camera operators were, you know, <laughs> right there on the stage with him basically. So, nice. um, so that one was pretty cool. Uh, Jake Owen was another one. Um, but as far as from a sports perspective, um, you can't beat the national championships that we've hosted. I mean, 
we talked about the Northern and, and Ferris State game. Uh, you know, came down to the buzzer, last second shot, you know, yeah. sold out, sold out atmosphere. I mean, I don't know if I've heard the Pentagon be that loud before. And yeah, so I mean, the the national championships we have uh, coming up here in December, we have the D two volleyball championships, um, so that'll be fun. And then our our big game is we always try to get one or two, you know, Division one matchups here every year. Last year we had uh, Nebraska and. I'm drawing blank on who they played, but those are always fun to get the the local, you know, Sioux Falls fan base, or you know, they can drive from a couple hours away, and uh, and they just pack the Pentagon, and a lot of those fans have never been here before, so it's always cool to hear their comments and reactions and whatnot during those big games. But yeah, so a variety <laughs> to go along <laughs> with kind of what we do as a variety, but kind of one of each there. So nice. Nice. Yeah. And you even mentioned some of those fans that come, they've never been there before. And that's, that's kind of what we've heard from these uh, event producers and stuff that we've interviewed is uh, that might be the first and only experience they get at your venue. So you've, you're always trying to implement it and be perfect and tr- do your best job every time so that they get that awesome experience, even if they're only there once. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Not only from the, from the player's perspective to give them the best environment, but obviously the crowd does a good job with that too. And they, um, it helps to have a good crowd, but uh, yeah, we just try to make their experience that much better. So they want to come back, you know, when, when they can. So, yeah. And, you know, thinking back, Chad, to when you were a, uh, a mascot wrangler, um, to where, <laughs> to where you are today, what, what are some of the, the biggest things that have changed, you know, with, with just that the industry overall from then to now? Oh, it's just, um, well, from the technical standpoint, I kind of started in the, uh, standard definition world, not quite. I mean, in a lot of the venues were going to HD. So that's been, uh, throughout my time, that's been happening over time. And now, and now everybody's moving to 4k and 8k. So it's just, that's a trend that, you know, that's always going to be improving. And, and you mentioned the pixel pitch, just how clear these displays are getting is unbelievable, you know? And, but I mean, from the, uh, entertainment or from the kind of back of the house, that's all kind of stays the same. They're, they're going to play the game. Some of the rules might change here and there, but, you know, as our, as a producer's job, it's just to uh, give the fans kind of a good experience, give the players a good experience. And then, you know, if we're streaming it to the web or to TV to give the viewers at home a good experience as well. Right. It sounds like always staying on top of, of what's next to is kind of what you're saying, because whether it's the equipment's changing, but you got to always like keep your education going and learning about what's coming up next. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Uh, there's always something to be learning, whether that's going to user group or just, you know, watching YouTube tutorials or whatever it is. It's just if you're staying still, then somebody else is, you know, is, is passing you. So, yeah, yeah, I think we have a saying that's like one percent better yeah. every day. Try to be one percent better. And you, you got to keep up on things if you're going to get that that better in there. That's um, right. Well, that's that's good and interesting. And thanks for sharing all of that with us today, Chad, and, and talking about the Pentagon and, and joining us to to tell us about it. Yeah, you bet. You know, one one other thing that I'll mention during this, uh, sorry, during this COVID-19, you know, pandemic, um, my role changed a little. I, you know, I haven't stopped working during this. I've actually probably been busier than normal um, producing videos and whatnot for social media. But one, one of the cool ones that we're doing coming up this week, uh, we have a football academy over at the field house. And normally it's called the Riggs uh, Premier Football Academy. Normally we would host college coaches at the field house to come scout these high school uh, kids that are looking to play college football. Obviously with everything going on, that can't happen. And so they came to me and said, Hey, can we, how can we get these coaches, you know, looks at these kids. And so I, you know, came up with the idea to live stream uh, this football combine. So we did one back in May, um, limited the attendance. So it was, you know, groups of 10 or 10 or less, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, they would do the 40 yard dash. They would do the vertical and then run through football drills. And uh, it went over really well. We did a, we did a two or three camera shoot and um, different sessions were broken down by, by the different positions and it went over well. So they're, they're doing it again here this week for, for three sessions uh, just to give those kids looks and, and hopefully it, it pans out to some scholarships. So that was just one other event that I thought I'd mention. That's really cool. So in that live stream you're doing then, are you doing some kind of data overlay so that they know like how fast that 40 yard dash was or how are you incorporating like that kind of info? Yeah. So I actually, I, I wanted to, um, but it wouldn't be official. Um, oh, and so my thought was to do like a, a lower third that says unofficial time. But after talking with the, uh, the power coaches and whatnot, they, they said, well, we don't want to confuse people because if I start the time 
you know, half a second later than the actual time, then that might look bad. So what we do, uh, the kid runs a 40 and then the, the power coach is mic'd up and not only does he say the time, but he also shows the camera right by the starting line. Oh, there you go. What the, what the time was. Yeah. Nice. So if he runs a four or five, then he'll, you know, he'll say four or five and then we'll get a shot of it on camera and then we'll go back to a shot of him kind of as a hero shot. That's, that's a nice little workaround. Yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah. It, it, it works. And I think, yeah, we got a lot of good feedback from the first one and, and some of the kids want to, to better their times and whatnot. So they signed up for the second one too. So it's um, definitely different, different times, but also, you know, we're doing the best we can. So, yeah, that's awesome that you're coming up with different ways to do things during, during these uh, COVID times. I think that's a, a trend too, is, is everybody's kind of finding a different way to, to work around and do what they can during this time. And like you even said, you're, you're busier than, than before <laughs> sometimes, depending on what's going on. Yeah. Now, I mean, now that you got me talking here, another one that came up is our, our legends auction banquet that we have every, usually it's right this week or maybe even last week in June, but, um, it's, it's moving to a, a virtual platform now, obviously. So the banquet, uh, we're going to shoot a, uh, basically it'll be a live, live program that we'll put on, on Facebook and then, um, the banquet. So instead of having a table, you're going to be in a zoom, basically a zoom room. Okay. And, uh, and so you can talk back and forth with the people that would normally be at your table. Hey, should we bid on this item or wait or whatever? Um, and so that's kind of what I'm working on this summer is figuring out how that's going to work and getting that all organized. That's, um, that's coming up in August. So it's a lot of, here's what our events are. We can't do them the normal way. So Chad, help us figure out a way to pull this off. <laughs> that's pretty much, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man. Well, that that's cool. And, uh, again, thanks for joining us to share some of those things. It's always interesting to hear what you do on a normal, regular day basis and, and what you're doing during these times now that everything's changed a little bit, but thanks for joining us and sharing your story today. Yeah, you bet, guys. Thanks for having us on, having me on. All right. Thanks, Chad. All right. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Dectronics Experience Podcast. Please subscribe at your favorite place to listen to podcasts to keep up with our latest episodes. 